This video provides information to help you select which type of RGB lights you should use in your Holiday Coro design. Now this video is normally focused towards our animated display items such as singing Christmas trees or singing pumpkins but it may be applied to other products. Now first of all um, please be aware that in general for our animated items we do recommend dumb nodes and we'll explain what that is so we're going to have a little bit of a preference here towards those. All right this video only provides information on the selection. We have additional videos that provide information on how to build and solder and connect and sequence those node solutions. All right, there are two types of nodes. First of all, a node is, in general, the way we describe it, it looks a lot like a mini light. This is a vertical, and in some cases here, you can see it has a flat base with a vertical portion. Uh, but they look a lot like mini lights. Uh, the difference is, is that they're much larger. In general, they're about 12 millimeters or about a half an inch in diameter. Now, there are two different kinds of nodes. There are smart or dumb. And smart also might be referred to as intelligent. Uh, it might also be referred to as pixel. And a dumb is also referred to as basic. Now, what are the differences there? The differences are that each one of the smart nodes has a chip in it, and this chip allows it to be directly controlled individually. The dumb nodes do not have any chip in them. All they are is simply a light, very similar to what you have in mini lights. So what that means is, is that if I apply power, and we'll talk about controllers in a moment, if I apply power to one of these wires uh, and also a common positive, the entire string will turn a particular color. So for example here, if we applied power to the red and the yellow, we would get red across all three of these. I cannot control each one. So to create any kind of control between different nodes, I need to hook up additional controllers. Now, within pixels or smart nodes here, we can control each individual one. So for example, this unit here, this node, can be red, this one could be green, and this one could be blue. And they could all be in different intensities. So, there's a lot more control with nodes. Now, there are some disadvantages. One, the cost is generally about 25% higher for these. And you also have more channels to sequence because in this particular string of three, uh, we have nine channels. But in this, we still only have three channels in a basic or dumb string or smart pixels can come in different varieties. Uh, they come in different protocols or basically different languages that each one of these chips talks. Uh, they come in, for example, 2801, 2811, 6803, 1804. All of that does not matter as long as the node type you select is appropriate and works with the controller you use. Now, for controllers for smart pixels, this is what we have. So we have units like this, which are designed to control one string of nodes. Here we have uh, intelligent nodes. Here we have a J1 Sys controller. It's designed to handle eight strings of nodes. Uh, here we have a SAN devices unit. It's designed to handle 16. It does have limited current. Uh, so those are for pixels. Now for basic or dumb RGB, you can use controllers like this. For example, this is designed to handle nine strings, or one string, or in this case, one string. So these are basic controllers, or dumb controllers, and these units are for pixels. Why would you select smart over dumb? Well, it depends on the device that you're going to be using them in, or the element, or the prop. Now, for props where you need to do limited control, for example, in our animated faces, you may need to have three, four, or five different animations within the face for the mouth control. Well, that only requires that the string entirely be one color at a given time. So, if the mouth is wide open, you only need all the lights in the mouth for the lower portion, for example, if it was wide open, to be one color. So, that lends itself to basic or dumb strings. Now, if you wanted to be able to control all the colors in there. For example, let's say you wanted the mouth to be able to twinkle uh, so that each individual LED was twinkling. 
you would need pixel-based controllers. But again, remember, there are no free drives here. If you use a pixel-based controller, you'll have a lot more channels to control, and that means a lot more sequencing to manage. We should clarify here, when we talk about channels, uh, if we talk about a basic controller, a basic controller takes DMX in, and it outputs, along with power, and it outputs three different controls over three different LEDs, or groups uh, of LEDs, for example, here. That means that you have three DMX channels. So if we came out of this controller, we'd have three channels. That would control the entire string at one color at a time. For pixels, you're going to again have three channels for each unit. So we'll refer in certain cases to pixels as RGB channels. So this is one RGB channel, this is one RGB channel, and this is one RGB channel. So an RGB channel is nothing more than three DMX channels for each of the colors. In this basic strip here, or this basic nodes, there are just one RGB channels and three DMX channels, even though they go across all the nodes. Some basic background on DMX. DMX has a limit of 512 channels per universe. So for example, here we have an Acta dongle from Holiday Coro. The unit here can output up to 512 channels. So what does that mean? That means that, for example, here, if you use this string of lights, and this is dumb, you could use 170 different strings on different controllers. So you could have 170 of these controllers, technically, controlling all of these. So it allows you a lot of room. Now, on pixels, as you can imagine, you use up your channels quite quickly. Because if you have nine here, and if you have several hundred pixels in a, in a prop or an element, you can use them up quite quickly. So in that case, some of these controllers are not DMX in, like this controller, which is DMX in and then pixels out. This controller is actually E131, which is Ethernet in, and then all these channels out. This can actually handle eight universes. So that's eight times 512 channels. All right, so we won't go into too much there because E131 is much more complex. So what you should know on our animated faces, expect if you're using our uh, using pixel controllers, expect about 500 to 1,000 channels. Okay, for our animated faces, we do recommend basic control, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, and you can do that in several different ways. We have a number of different controllers. You can use your own controller if you have a DC-based controller. Uh, here we have a 27 channel, a DMX, or nine RGB channels. Uh, there we have a three channel unit uh, that is in a box, switchless, and then here we have a switch DMX uh, three channel unit, one RGB channel. Uh, the advantage to this unit here is that you have nine RGB channels, and because all of our designs for our singing faces have eight or less channels per face, you end up with just the right amount plus one extra channel for additional use. So, how do you do that? All you simply do is mount this unit into a waterproof container. You can see our website for information about how to do that fairly inexpensively. Uh, then, once you've mounted the controller, you'll go ahead, mount all of your RGB nodes. Again, see our other videos on how to do this. Uh, you'll simply cut off this connector if it has one, and you will then attach that to the screw terminals using a screwdriver. Now, in many cases, the distance between this controller where it's mounted uh, and the end of the string of RGB basic lights is not long enough. What you'll need to do is extend that. And we do sell four conductor wire. A four conductor wire will simply just solder onto this connection and allow you to extend the length. Now, a few notes. Soldering uh, for people who have not done it seems a little complicated, but for do-it-yourself RGB, it's a skill you'll absolutely need to have. And it's not as complicated as it might seem. Check YouTube for a lot of different videos on how to solder. They're not that hard to do. One thing we do see over and over again, we see problems where people have used uh, non-soldered connections, for example, just twisting the wires together and using electrical tape. We do not recommend at all using electrical tape. We always recommend using shrink wrap tubing, which you can find on our website. You simply slide this over the connection before you start. Once you've soldered the connection, move it over the connection point and use some heat from a lighter or other heat device 
and that will seal up the connection, ensuring that there are no shorts. That's how easy it is. Again, see our other videos for information on how to complete these projects from start to finish. And should you have any additional questions, feel free to contact us at the Contact Us link at the bottom of our page. Thank you.